Hey, this is Kirby Morrow, you know me, voice of Cyclops, Goku, and you're listening to Kamehameha Madhouse. And welcome to the movie Madhouse. We're back. I'm Rob. I'm James. <laughs> I'm Jason, I think. I think. I noticed that. <laughs> what, you think? Yeah. It's one of those days. Uh, okay. Maybe I am. Maybe I'm not. Depends on the question. Exactly. <laughs> nice. I love it. So, guys, how you been? How's the new year treating you? So far, so good. <laughs> uh, until <laughs> until the news hit today. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. So yeah, it is what it is. I guess that means you're back to skip the dishes stuff, right? Can, or can you do food? Yeah, skip the it'll be skip the dishes and probably walk-ins. Gotcha. Oh, I could get popcorn. How, yeah, Enough. how much how much business did you actually get that way? Uh this time around when we when we had to stop selling food to people watching movies, I, I don't know that it was a lot. Our food sales went way down, but it's because we were selling all these tickets and we weren't allowed to sell food to them. So Believe me, I didn't even know that was a thing. I go to see Spider-Man and what? No pot? What? Yeah. You, we, had, we had Thursday of Spider-Man. We had Friday and Saturday. And those three days seemed like old times. The, the lobby was flooded with people and stuff. Oh, so I literally almost- went to the very first screening where you couldn't have popcorn because i went the sunday afternoon yeah sunday it started no no selling food yeah see if you yeah if you were there thursday friday saturday you would have been like geez is everything back to normal yeah because we went saturday morning uh, like uh, i think two o'clock came and i went yeah we got the popcorn and the candy and everything and so someone told me i think it was a week later there's no food it's like dude i just had some what are you talking about yeah i had no idea and Whatever. Anyways, that's happier times. Come on. Yes. Exactly. Happy New Year. Happy top belated 10, Christmas and all 10, that stuff. 10, 10. That's right. And films of 2021. There we go. I had to make the uh this was actually easier to do than than a full top twenty. Right? Because 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 about the majority, the about ninety nine percent of my top ten were solid. It was the bottom 11 to 20 that were very, very, very in flux. Okay. When I started this list, I had watched 11 films from last year. Seriously? <laughs> yep. So I did a mad dash. I think I watched five. I have six that didn't make my list. And that's all that I watched last year. Oh, okay. I had a that, ton. I had a ton, but I also had a 18? ton that I watched. Really? 18. And I watched two over the last couple of days. I think I was in the... 40 or 50 range, but I also uh, picked a lot from Google play this year. <laughs> gotcha. Okay. See, I didn't okay. do that. So once, once we got back to the theaters, I'm like, yeah, I I'm going to be at the theater. And most of these I watched in the theater. Oh, fair enough. I went to the theater twice within a week. Like that's <laughs> rare for me. Oh, it's so nice to be back. So I did, I did see both movies for next week. <laughs> yes good good yes good we'll discuss that more oh, near the end of the show because we're I'm, pre- I'm pre- yeah i'm prepared for that one and i've got a little something a little something else i'm bringing to the table in there as well Ooh. See, i haven't watched the second one yet but i figured uh, i wanted to watch stuff i knew might make my list <laughs> and uh focus on that one after today so Right now, let's get into our top ten films of twenty twenty one. Are we doing? Are we doing honorable mentions? Oh yeah, we'll get to that. I, I've got a couple of honorable so mentions. Those are late. Those are later. Yeah. Yes. All right. Just in case your honorable mention is on one of our lists. Yeah. Right. No, oh, that's cool. <laughs> so, Jason, what you got? Well, when I started looking up this list and whatnot, I realized that. I only watch the pop, poppy stuff. I only watch the sci-fi, the comedy, the horror. I don't watch 
real cinema <laughs> uh, at all. I don't want. I I haven't watched any of the Oscar flicks or anything like that. You know, so I <laughs> I kind of find that funny. But why? You know, I like what I like. Yeah. You know, so um, and and that, my number ten is the in the interesting one, and it is Zack Snyder's Justice League. Nice. That it made my top ten because not only was it just a good film overall, it did redeem the steaming pile of crap from a few years prior. It in it my for mind. half about half the time it was in my top ten. Uh, I'm putting it at my ten, not just on its own on its own film merits, but that's your number two. It's my number two. Wow, I love that film. It is it, an honorable mention for me. Now, is yours based strictly on the story and and what it was, or are you giving it some weight because of what it did? Oh no, no. Well, I like what it did, but I'm strictly just talking as a film going experience. Okay, okay. Because the same thing happened with Batman versus Superman. You know, that first two and a half hour run, like Mike and I went in the theater and saw, was trash. And it was hard to watch. It felt like five hours. When the extended edition came out, it flew by. And that's exactly what happened with Zack Snyder's. I was sitting there and it's like, okay, I think we're about an hour, maybe an hour and 15 minutes into it. We were almost at the three hour mark. I love the chapters too. Yes. You know, I love the way they laid it out. It everything i love yep. the presentation so yeah, that's uh, yeah. too and it has the second best performance of the year uh jared leto's little cameo as the joker oh. yeah well <laughs> i well that, that's just me i think the two best performances of the year are both by jared leto see i like him as the joker <laughs> But yeah. I like the stuff from Suicide Squad more than I really liked that. I liked I liked this version better. There was I I did I did like this version better. There was a couple points that seemed way over the top and didn't flow like the other stuff did. Now, mind you, even Suicide Squad didn't flow that much because so much was hacked out of it. So, but he is a great Joker. He is. Yeah. Okay, James, number ten. Oh. Okay, my number 10. My number 10 was a movie we actually had at the theater for about like a week or two. Um, came and went. I don't know if Jason or you saw it. I think it was it was sort of like Empty Man and Come Play last year. It's sort of like almost no previews. Here's the movie. I don't know if anybody's going to watch it. And then it's gone. This was called The Night House. I've never heard of that. It was at our theater for about a week or two. Um, it is sort of like a supernatural thriller horror movie. It, it stars Rebecca Hall and she sort of, she's a widow and her husband has recently committed suicide and she find she, cause, uh, he, he went out on the boat near their lake house and shot himself with a gun that she didn't know that they even owned left a note that said, uh, you're right. There is nothing after you. You're safe now. Now, the note itself has multiple meanings, which I won't get into because you got to see the movie. But what she discovers is she discovers um, that he had built. And this is in the this is what intrigued me because I watched the trailer and this is what got me to watch it. She finds reverse blueprints for like the opposite version of their house. And she actually. Yeah. What is that? I'm remembering that now. Oh, OK. I hear a little jingling. <laughs> jingling? Keys or something? Oh, it might be uh, his beard rubbing on his mic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there it is. Okay. <laughs> anyway, yeah. So she finds blueprints for a reverse version of their house and finds the actual house that's on the other side of the lake. And like the, the address number is reversed and all the features of the building are reversed. And it's almost like she's finding this whole other side, this life of her husband that she never knew about at, but after he's dead and some very strange things start going on. So I will, I will leave it at that because it's worth, it's worth investigating. I remember that trailer now. I yeah. really do. Cause it looked intriguing, but then it just dropped. It, got, it was gone and I never heard of it. And of course out of sight, out of mind. 
Yeah, and it was directed by David Bruckner, who was one of the directors of the first VHS, one of the directors of the movie The Signal, Southbound. There's a movie from just a few years ago called The Ritual that takes place in the UK, which was, at, uh, my girlfriend and I watched it, I think it was on Amazon Prime or something, which was, in, had an impress, had a very intriguing premise as well. People getting lost in the woods with this supernatural monster coming after Ooh. them. Anyway. My number 10, The Night House. Very nice. Uh, yeah, doesn't ring a bell at all. Uh, came, mine, came and went. Mine is not a theatrical release. It's a Netflix uh, production. And uh, as soon as I saw the trailer, because it had so many amazing people, uh, and I hope if I say her name wrong, oops, because I mask everybody's names. Carla Giacchino is in it. Uh, Angela Bassett. Uh, Lena Headley. You know, with these people, it's like, I got to watch it. And then you get the main actress, Karen Gillan, Gunpowder Milkshake. Oh, somebody mentioned this. I think I, you mentioned this. I, I mentioned me. it at one point. I, oh, okay. I, both I, of you did. <laughs> I did enjoy that. I didn't didn't make my top 10. I never saw this one, but I heard lots about it. Like a Hitman well, movie? Hit woman movie? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I got 16 to pick from. So these are the ones that did the best out of the 16. And I had a blast watching this one. You know, oh, shoot. I just realized when I forgot. Uh oh. And it's going to screw up my list. Uh oh. Uh, okay. I'll figure this out. Okay, move on. Move on. Keep going. Okay. But yeah. <laughs> uh, powder milkshake. Like I said, it's got the, the classic hit girl kind of thing coming in. And then. Then her mom gets dropped into the picture with this group of women that she picked off. Really, really solid. I loved it. So now we'll go into number nine and see how far Jason's messed up his list. Uh, I've decided it's not. I'm just going to slip it into honorable mentions because it's going to take too much work to try and put it. Uh, I'll signify which one I'm talking about, but I'll just leave it at that. So my number nine is the one I got to see just like a week ago, The King's Man. Oh yeah, I went I went to see that w uh, with my boys, and I liked it a lot. They were middle of the road. I give it a more like three quarters up. Oh, um, for what it was, uh, you you the, give it you give it an adequ adequately paved road. Oh, definitely. <laughs> like I I get what they were going for, and whether it was intentional or not. They, they did some interesting things that I think added to what the idea was. Okay, we all know it's the prequel, the origin story of the Kingsman organization, which I'm wondering if they're retconning themselves because I feel like Colin Firth said it was founded a lot sooner than this, but I haven't looked into that part yet. And I will kind of want to ignore that. They wouldn't be the first. <laughs> they wouldn't be the first people to do that. Right. But uh, so it's all set like World War One ish. It's very, it's not as smooth as the Kingsman films look, you know, like the action, you know, how the action scenes are very smooth and ballet like. Yeah. This doesn't have, it has, this has it in basically two scenes midway through and then the climax has a bit of it. Otherwise, it's a lot rougher and grittier and, and just not, just not as, as smooth. And I think that works because it's like, well, this isn't the Kingsman organization yet. They got to start from somewhere, you know. They didn't start out perfect, yeah. You know, I just I felt that that just added to the whole experience and really just added a whole kind of like a dramatic and emotional depth to what is otherwise just a silly fun secret agent stuff, you know. Interesting. I really, really, really liked it. I have to confess, I, I've only seen the first one, but I really enjoyed the crap out of it. I just need to watch the rest. I liked the first one, but I don't know that it had much rewatch value, and I hated Sam Jackson's lisp in it. I, so that I, I I've <laughs> talked about that when we did the offbeat roles that he was that was one of my best ones, right? Like to me, no. that's one of his best roles because it is so far different from what he's known for doing. Number two was very weird, although I liked Elton John in it. <laughs> I put Elton John's cameo in that. As, 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 you know what? Yeah, that, he was, didn't even have a cameo. No, that was a small, role. Was a small supporting <laughs> role. Yes, because he, 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 he's he's in. He's got at least four or five scenes. Yeah. 
So yeah, I, I I just I love how kooky and crazy they are. Now I gotta watch it, definitely. <laughs> and there will probably be a sequel to this one. Like there'll probably be another one in between. I still wish that that Matthew Vaughn had picked the kick ass franchise to continue with rather than this, but I think the the crowds uh, spoke there. I don't think Kick Ass Two did very well at all in theaters. Where Kingsman has been pretty solid. No, no, yeah, that's true. Mm-hmm. So, all right, all right, James, what's your number nine? My number nine is the first of two Ridley Scott movies that were released this year, and it is the Last Duel. I didn't see that. This movie, this movie is awesome. It is fascinating, and despite despite how weird the haircuts look on Ben Affleck and Matt Damon, they, it, it 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 makes sense for the movie. But the story, the way, and I've heard some people talk about the storytelling uh, mechanism. I, in this I movie heard it's getting they, kind of ripped apart. Yeah, and as opposed to House of Gucci, which was which is which is successful. This one, and I haven't seen House of Gucci yet, but this one, the storytelling mechanism, which I've heard mixed reviews about is actually very impressive because it's sort of like vantage point where they tell the same story in this one uh, three times because you have Matt Damon playing Sir Jean de Carouge and you get like the first chapter opens up and says like the truth according to Jean de Carouge and then the second chapter is the truth according to Jacques Legree which is Adam Driver and then the third one is the truth according to Marguerite de Carouge which is Matt Damon's wife in the movie, but you also get, no, I won't say it. Um, there's just something different with the title that comes up on the screen. Okay. But you've got, depending on whose truth it is, it, it changes the way you view that protagonist and how you view the other people in the story. And then when the, when the, when the camera changes to the other person, that person obviously is center stage and the other people are maybe cast in a not so not so bright light. And then it changes once again. But who 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 does who does who does the medieval medieval battle scenes better than Ridley Scott these days? Robin Hood, Kingdom of Heaven, Gladiator. Well, that that's thrown into this one as well. And gotcha. also, it just goes without saying, Matt Damon, Adam Driver. Uh, ben Affleck, fantastic performances. Ben Affleck is pretty funny in this movie. It's it it it's almost like some of his wise ass wise ass dialogue from other movies, and they just kind of transplanted into this one, but it works. So it's like Goodwill Hunting too. I I want if I ever had the chance to interview applesauce, ben, bitch. If if I ever had a chance to interview Ben and Matt, I would ask them: Are there outtakes of you guys all up in this military garb talking like? Talking like like the Goodwill Hunting characters. <laughs> there has to be at least one outtake of him doing the whole apples. <laughs> like, you, you know, you know it has to be. How do you like them apples? <laughs> it's, it's, it's hunting season three. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I don't it's know. A pre- it's a prequel story, <laughs> but it's it's in a very impressive. Geely <laughs> with sword fights. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty darn close. Eh? Oh, let me see. Happy well, my, New Year, Rob. My well, nine is the first and only Nicolas Cage film on my list. Oh. I don't think I had to put that in there. Um, and it's it's one of the best because he is. <gasps> it's Willy's Wonderland. Oh, oh, okay. I've gone back and watched this a couple times. I have a blast watching this film. It is so much fun. Yes. And yes, still it might is. be the only Five Nights at Freddy's movie we get after it lost Chris Columbus. Yeah. Well, it's lost a few directors over the years, trust me. But well, uh, no, that's true. Matter. We got this, this. Doesn't yeah, it doesn't matter. Will Willie's Wonderland came out, got hit the ground first, and it hit the ground well. Like God, it's so oh, good. It, it did. This, if you're going to look at Five Nights at Freddy's style movies, the Banana Splits movie came out first. But oh, is right. that a fight? Still haven't, wa- still haven't watched that yet. It's oh, a, yeah. It's the same style where they're in a building and these animatronics are coming after them. Okay. But, uh, but I feel like the Banana Splits movie is not going to have quite the caliber of what Willy's Wonderland gave us. Oh, trust me. I love the Banana Splits movie, but this is a great <laughs> Nicolas Cage movie. Yeah. 
Yeah, although there is another movie that came out this year with him that I have not watched yet um, called Pig. Oh, yeah. I it, is, uh, a, it is on my list. And it's supposed to be a, like, a really great role for him. It's it on is your... fantastic. We're going to get to that one then. Oh, so, my yeah. God. My number nine, Willy's Wonderland. Got to check it out. Uh, yes. Yeah. Um, somehow I skipped that. I And like I know I, sh- I, have sh- I had it on my list. And I think I was shuffling my list and I forgot to put it back in. So I'm calling an audible right now. I, and I, th- this hurts to do this, but Willie's Wonderland is my number six. Is your number six? That's my number six. <laughs> okay. I'm was, bumping out my number six for Willie. It would be in the bottom half of my top 20 if I was doing a top 20 this year. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. I had to make it, that on the fly because <laughs> I, do, I do love that movie. And the fact that I saw it with my nephew and he loved it. And then we watched it again with Xander, who kind of liked it. <laughs> kind of liked so, it. Just kind of. <laughs> but I'll take that. That's a pass in my He probably place, secretly so. watches it at his place. <laughs> just... Oh, he's too busy watching every other horror movie that he can find right now. He's, he's on a huge horror kick right now. Well, what's your number eight, Jason? Talk about horror. Uh, and I cheated a little bit here, but I put the Fear Street trilogy. Oh, okay. That th- that Fear I, Street trilogy on Netflix has They're all just... technically movies, right? <coughs> yes, the, it's it's three films, three feature so length. I, th- films. I think it's fair if they all I think it's fair to group them together. They're all <coughs> released in the same year. And they, they all released on the same day. <laughs> and they oh no, they were they were I think a week or so apart, each one of oh, them. Oh, were they? Oh, yep. okay. I, I I just watched them like for the first time a couple months ago, so months after they've been out. Um, but it was just so well done. Like it, it, it was a breath of fresh air. I didn't realize that it was full R rated when I'm watching it, and then you know the climax of the first film hits, and something is totally horrific happens. One of the goriest things I've ever seen in a film, and I'm like, holy crap, this is really R rated. Like I had hey, no idea it was. I hey, got Ghostbusters. I, I never got around to watching Ghostbusters. Neither did I. Nope. I never got I never did get to see it. So it's un, it's unfortunately left off the list. Yeah. Or unless Rob this... has it. People, people, people. Oh, so Rob might. Yeah, I know. I okay. know. Shame on us. So yeah, that's my number eight. The Fear Street trilogy. And I think if that that's gonna give us either a new trend or we're gonna at least see some of the actresses from it moving in coming into end of their own. We already know the one girl from it. She's already on uh, Stranger Things. So, well, eleven. Eleven. No, no. Oh no, no, the red, the redheaded. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It was interesting. I did an interview last night with George Mahalka. Uh, he directed My Bloody Valentine, mm-hmm. and oh, we yeah. got talking about how it seems like horror is the training ground for film people, be it directors, you know, art directors, actresses, because ninety nine percent of the big people you see today. Had their first or t- first or two uh, first or second film in horror. Yeah, well, some of the most famous ones: Jennifer Aniston. Yep, was in the first Leprechaun. Johnny Depp was in the first Nightmare on Elm Street. Holly <laughs> Hunter and Jason Alexander are in the Burning. Yeah, yeah. What There's is the Burning? It's Friday the Thirteenth that came out after it, but they said they wrote it before it, and it just didn't get the the push that Friday the Thirteenth did. Oh, oh. I, thought, I thought the burning was like uh, you know crazy cult cults in a cornfield kind of thing. Kevin oh, Bacon's oh. Friday Friday the Thirteenth. This is it's it's in a camp setting. Oh, like, okay, yeah, but uh, it's it's pretty good. I liked it, but yeah, that's like I said, Jason Alexander with hair, Holly Hunter's in that one. It's that's where people really get going. Yeah, oh yeah, <laughs> Paul Rudd. They're the easiest things to get cast in. <laughs> but it, it's just the, it's hard to get eyes on any of that product right yeah. all right james what's your number eight okay my number eight my number eight is a film called our friend and it's based on it's based on a new york times uh, no sorry an esquire article from 2015 so it's a true story And it's basically you have Casey Affleck, who's married to Dakota Johnson, and they have a couple of kids. And she comes, she develops cancer. uh, I think it's breast cancer or something or ovarian cancer. 
anyway, she she has a terminal diagnosis and she's going to die. Now the mo- the movie jumps around a lot to like opens with them talking about how they're going to tell the kids that she ha- that she's dying and then it jumps to like a year before the diagnosis years before the diagnosis a year after the diagnosis but essentially it's three friends because you've got dakota johnson casey affleck and their friend jason siegel and he's one of their best friends who's moved away and he is sort of living alone uh down on his luck and he gets a call from them they're reaching out to him and that she's dying so he basically moves there to help out and moves in and becomes almost like a hospice worker, a caregiver because the husband, he, he realizes he can't take care of the kids and his wife who's dying all at once. So the best friend comes in and moves in. I, and it's all about that friend. I, I think our judges are telling us this film has to be disqualified. This film no. in 2019. no, 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 mm, IMDb has it listed as 2019. Wikipedia has it had its world premiere at the 2019 Toronto International Film Festival. It screened at the AFI Fest November 16, 2019. In January 2020, Roadside Attractions acquired distribution rights to the film. It was retitled Our Friend and released on January 22nd, 2021. There we go. It's back in. <laughs> okay. Wow, they held on to it for a year while, you know, COVID, I guess. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But yeah, true story. Fantastic performances by Casey Affleck, Dakota Johnson, Jason Siegel, with a cameo by uh, Brienne of Tarth herself, Gwendolyn Christie. Captain Phasma? Yes, Captain Phasma. There we go. <laughs> she, she has a very, a very Im- uh, I'd say, very impactful cameo. Cool. And it's a bit of a, it's a, bit of a tearjerker at, at times, so. Well, some of those. <laughs> uh, my number eight is another one not in the theaters, but it's an Amazon original. Ooh. As soon as I saw the trailer for this, never mind Chris Pratt's in it, I had to watch it anyway. But as soon as oh. I saw the trailer, I loved the concept of the Tomorrow War. I keep hearing about this. Yep. These people I made my honorable in, mentions. Showed up in a football field in the middle, uh, sorry, in the middle of a game. They said, We're 30 years in your future. We're fighting a war and we need your help. I did hear that this is my boss told watch it. He told me that everyone kept wondering when JK Simpsons, the shots of him getting jacked, they thought it was for commissioner Gordon and nothing was shown. He said, this is the movie he got jacked for. <laughs> He's great. Uh-huh. Just, just the opening. Yes. When they're drafting all these people and then they get zapped into the future. And they're literally, they show up in the sky and start falling. Oh shit. And, some people land on on platforms, some don't, and, and crash. And they, <sighs> it, it's just sounds, a start to it. Sounds like the opening of Predators. Yeah, it, it kind of sort of was. <laughs> it is so yeah. good, though. Trust me, nice. yeah. it's worth a watch. I, it was, it was, I, uh, it was an interesting concept. I enjoyed it a lot. Am I imagining things, or did they green light a sequel? I haven't heard anything, but I haven't looked for anything on that. I want to say I have heard that. I okay. don't entirely know how that would work, but because I believe it was whatever. successful on Netflix, right? It, or Amazon? Uh, it, it was Amazon, and Amazon. it was really, really successful. Yes. This okay. Is where you get your disaster and future wars. It's called the day after tomorrow war. <laughs> That's the to... Asylum Pictures knockoff. Yes, oh, yeah. going into the future to stop a hurricane with a nuke. Okay, number Stop seven. Stop a Sharknado with a new. <laughs> there we go. Jason, what's your number seven? My number seven is the one that I actually just watched yeah. like two hours ago. That's brilliant. You have oh, your wow. Sharknado crossover with the Tomorrow War of t- their Day After Tomorrow War. Like, this is the ultimate. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> I don't know why that excited me. <laughs> I, I don't know either. Excuse me. I'm having a podcast here. Leia doesn't care. Go away. Go away now. <laughs> okay. Um, my it's number seven is game. one that I just watched today. Like three hours ago, I finished watching it. Wow. But it 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 worked, It and it made the list at number seven, and it is Zack Snyder's second uh, appearance on this list, Army of the Dead. Oh, I keep meaning to check that out. 
I was going to, but then I heard so much negative. I thought, no, I don't want to tarnish Zach this year. I loved it. Yeah. Like, it, it is a little long. They probably could have split that up into like, – they they probably could could have worked that into a two a two flick deal. Doesn't Zack Snyder just make short films though? <laughs> I know. It, so it the it was a little long. So but it but still it worked. I would say the first two thirds of the film, fantastic. It is over the top cheesy. Hits every single action and zombie movie trope you can think of, hmm. but not in the overly done like hey you know everything's done really i think the best i think the analogy here is tongue in cheek like it, it's just the right amount you know they're having fun it has some good series has some good drama one of the best roles i've seen for dave batiste oh wow really? like he was really good for this one okay and it, it's it, it is just the right amount of silly I just, yeah, it it was awesome, and you could really see Zack Snyder all over it. Like this, it just felt like Snyder's work. You have sold me. I will watch it. I will. Not to and there's a now. prequel. There is a what? prequel that came out. There's a, a prequel that just came that came out like a month ago called yeah. Army of Thieves. Directed by someone else, but produced by. It, I think it was being yeah, shot around the same time. It was because it there, it was all made for Netflix. They did this on yeah. purpose, but it's about people pulling off a heist as this zombie outbreak is happening <clears> or something. Like they're using it as cover. That's so. That's stolen. That's from Last of Us Part Two. <laughs> well, yeah, you know they got to hurry up and get that out before uh, the HBO series drops. Yeah, he's he's creating his own universe right here. Right. <laughs> Yeah. All right, James, what you got for number seven? My number seven, uh, it, I I gotta say, I gotta say it five times in the mirror. Oh, <laughs> it was Candyman. I I, I, I couldn't <laughs> like because Candyman is just an all time great horror film. The second one was decent for it being the story told over again in New Orleans, and the third one was pretty forgettable but i was impressed even though i saw the very end of the movie just dip, ducking into one of the theaters i was impressed on what they did how they expanded the mythology and held off as long as they possibly could before showing you what everyone wanted to see at the very end of the movie <laughs> which yep um but I, I don't know what you're talking about you didn't see it no Oh, okay. Well, it, it was everyone was always. <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. You don't, don't worry about spoilers. I'm probably not going to watch it, so it's not a big, okay. big deal. Well, it because when they come out with a a Candyman remake or um, reboot or requel, as so, they sometimes call it, it's like, well, how do you have Candyman without Tony Todd? Tony Todd does make an appearance in this movie. It's yeah. at the very, very end. And it's worth the wait because what's his name? Yaya Abdul Mat something, the Black Manta guy from Aquaman does okay. a fantastic job as the main guy in this movie. And they expand it, the mythology, in that it's not just um, Tony Todd's character who was the technically the candy man. It's sort of like it's sort of a mantle that has been carried by more than one individual. He's just probably the most oh, well known. Okay. And you've got um, Coleman Domingo, uh, whose name doesn't necessarily ring a bell, but he's Victor Strand from Fear the Walking Dead, who shows up a few times in the movie, mostly to provide a bunch of exposition about Candyman, but it is stuff that you didn't really know before. Anyway. Hmm. It's a very, it's a very, very worthy follow up. Okay, hmm. I don't know what this means. What V O R O N G? I'm thinking that's probably some sort of virus bot or something. Oh. Yeah, don't click it. Yep, don't click that. There we go. 
Uh, my number seven is also in the horror genre. And it's a continuation, but not of a franchise that I loved. And it's called Spiral from the Book of Saw. Nice. I uh, love what they did with this being it's it's in the Saw universe, but it's not, you know, Jigsaw and everybody else. You know, Chris Rock is a detective and it's it is so nicely put together. It's so different, but yet it feels familiar. If that makes sense, cool. it's connected, but I don't know anybody who's actually watched it. I've been curious, but I was never too deep into the Sawverse. So. I love the Sawverse. I would I would put this at the bottom of all of them, but only because probably because of the weak connections. I liked how all the other ones had had a very strong connection as they went along. See. That was the problem with me with those ones, though, is they forced connections, you know, mm. when they had Amanda as his apprentice. And then suddenly there's another apprentice that Amanda didn't know about. <laughs> and then suddenly Dr. Gordon is an apprentice. I just, and... <laughs> like, oh God, just shoot me. OK, <laughs> I'll give you that. I'll give you that. <laughs> you know, that's why this was nice, because it had none of that. They weren't when... trying to force an apprentice down your throat. The only thing that kind of bothered me didn't about it... this one was how serious. How how awkward it was to see Chris Rock making a serious face all the time. <laughs> oh, see, I miss this. I loved him. It's hard to Jack. accept sometimes. Yes, but I yeah, loved he, Sam Jackson. Oh, in yeah, Pookie, Pookie. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Man, um, oh, I lost my train of thought. I had I had a thought. Don't worry, it'll be to the station eventually. <laughs> You think we'll get to number six. Actually, you get a pass because number six is Willie's Wonderland for you. So, James. Nice. nice. Uh, okay, my number six is the oh. first. Oh, go ahead. I figured it out. I figured it out. Wasn't in the last Saw movie, not Spiral, in the last Saw movie. Didn't, it, co- didn't it come down to the big reveal at the end where you had the Apprentice there was yet the apprentice another, there was another facing apprentice off, before Dr. facing Gordon. off yeah. with the cousin, the, the 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 father's uncle's cousin's former roommate of the first apprentice. Yes, otherwise that, okay. also known as Cal, Callum Keith Rennie. Yep. <laughs> there you go. Oh, <laughs> I knew one I'd of get my there. favorite Canadian this. actors. <laughs> All right, James, what you got for six? Okay, my number six is the first of two. Joe Carnahan movies released this past year. It is Boss Level. Oh, I didn't watch that. Boss Level is another iteration of the Groundhog Day theory, and it is so much fun. It is so much fun, but it also has it also has a strong. Uh, I'm gonna say it has a strong heart punch in there by Frank from Frank Grillo. Uh, anybody, you also got. Has anybody heard the weather reports from hell? Because remember, uh, I said I I play I made a an adjustment on the fly and bumped Willie's Wonderland in. Yes, I bumped out boss level <laughs> <laughs> at number six. <laughs> this has only happened once before. Well yep. done. <laughs> it is so much fun. Frank it Grillo is. got Naomi Watts in there. Will Sasso, Mel Gibson. Uh, Oh, I just I'm name? really digging Frank Grillo right now. Like he knows his lane. He knows what he's good at and he, that's all he ever plays and it just works. And he was also one of the leads in the second Joe Carnahan movie that he did Cop Shop, which another one we had at the theater for about 2 weeks and it was gone. But apparently that one was taken away from Joe Carnahan and re-edited, so not a lot of people were happy with that. I still think it's a great movie because of Gerard Butler and stuff and Frank Grillo. But this movie is Joe Carnahan said, this is totally hundred percent my movie and it is awesome. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I, I, I thought it was so much fun. Uh, it, and it played the, the, it really was Scott Pilgrim meets Groundhog Day. Oh, geez. I never thought about that. That's that's what it was. Especially like because all the individual special elite hitmen that come after him. Exactly. I my name is Guanji and I have done this. 
Hmm. You remember the you remember the movie Raiders of the Lost Ark where the guy pulls out the whip and swift or the sword or whatever, and Indiana Jones just pulls out the gun and shoots him. <laughs> All right, and then he there's, takes out the gun and the gun jams. <laughs> there's a Raiders reference. I'm going to watch it. Okay. Oh, it, it's a <laughs> it, it is it's a hoot. It is just so much fun. It mm. really is, and it's it's got some of that crazy hyper violence that's really popular right now. Oh yeah. Well, see. My number six actually is a real kind of level style movie um, with the inimitable Ryan Reynolds as Guy. Oh, I never watched this one. Free Guy. Oh, that's his number four. Wow. Number four. Oh, yeah. I knew I should have watched this. I've watched it three times already this year. It wow. is so much fun. Like from the trailers, I figured it was going to be good, but I just the stuff they put in there. And then you find that there's a Chris Evans cameo. And <laughs> yeah, you watch the what? behind the scenes stuff and find out what they had to do to make that like four second cameo period. You know? Oh my God. It's brilliant. Yeah. I love it. Nice. That's the, that's one of the movies that Chris and I saw at the drive-in. Yep. Oh, it's so, so good. great. Just that, 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 that awesome drive-in experience plus a great movie. You know, and it's it's another it's another one of those like just fun Ryan Reynolds projects. Well, you know, everything. he start he I, I want to I almost want to say that I'm starting to get Ryan Reynolds out, but I don't think that's even possible because then I watch Hitman's Wife's Bodyguard and I'm just fall in love with him even more. And <laughs> well, it's, it's, just, it's not just him in there though. Like, there's so many. Like Taika Waititi is great oh, as yeah. the evil company guy. You know. Yeah. Like, oh, he, it, well, TD is just fantastic at everything. The guy's a comedic genius. Yes. Yes. So, free guy, James, if you're just sitting home, just toss it in and laugh. Okay. You, okay. you, you'll enjoy it. You'll get a kick out of it. It's, <laughs> it's so much fun. It, it is, it plays that meta game a little bit. And yeah, it's fun. All right. Nice. Now we're into the top five. Woo. The good ones, James or Jason. Sorry. Uh, my top five is Black Widow. Really? Nice. I thought Black Widow, like ScarJo's beef with them and how much she got paid because of the whole theatrical release thing, completely 100% deserved. Like, yeah, she got screwed on that deal, and they know it, and that's why they caved, because that movie is absolutely fantastic from, from beginning to end. Plus... It gave us Florence Pugh's L- or Yelena Bolova. <laughs> why do you always why do you always pose like pose like that where you where you put <laughs> stick your leg out and whip your hair back as if everyone's watching you all the time? <laughs> and then Such she does her. Oh, the <laughs> floor's so dirty, oh, disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> she's that's she's just such a great new addition. I love I, I I'm really digging the new generation MCU stars that they're building oh. now. And she's Flor- great. She's gold on Hawkeye. Yes. Oh. Yeah. So, like, I, give me more of her and Haley Steinfeld together. I want yeah. more of that. I want, the, you know, yes, please. Yeah. But I read David Harbour, Rachel Wise, like that whole cast. It David was. Harbour yeah. is so good as <laughs> the Red yep. Guardian. So, yeah. did he ask about me? <laughs> <laughs> I told you, I'm busy. Go play with your Chewbacca. Go rip his face off. Keep going. <laughs> All right. Well, while well, Jason's busy talking to Leia, James, what you got for five? My number five was previously mentioned, and it is Pig. Ah. Pig yeah. is fantastic. I heard about it from my buddy Dalton, and it is probably probably Nicolas Cage's finest performance that what I've se- that I've seen. It, he's He's a, a, a straggly guy, and he's he's basically a Whatever. former a former elite chef who has basically walked away from the world for ten years or so, and he has this truffle pig that he uses to help find truffles in the wilderness where he lives, and a guy comes into town every once in a while, I think every week, get buys the truffles off of him or trades like food and supplies for the truffles they take back into town to use in these high end restaurants. Well, one day someone comes and invades his house, knocks him unconscious, steals his pig. So he gets his friend to take him into town. I 
where's my pig and it's it not i had heard it compared to a john wick kind of thing where i was about <laughs> someone took his pig and he's going after them he's not going exactly after them in the same way but he's also a guy you don't necessarily want to mess with but it's because you have let's see you have nicholas cage alex wolf adam arkin are the three primary people you'd recognize and i'm not sure who plays the pig but um <laughs> i'm sure nicholas cage could as well if he tried hard enough <laughs> oh yeah it, it, was, it, it was gary oldman <laughs> <laughs> yes but it is it is a fantastic movie regardless if you're a nicholas cage fan or not I I really wanted to see it. I was trying to watch it with Xander, but we didn't get a chance before he went back up. So yeah. Well, so now it's three. I got to watch. My number five is back to the comic book genre, and Ooh. it's uh, a sequel everybody was anticipating, and it did not disappoint. Woody Harrelson coming back as Cletus Cassidy, and Tom Hardy as Eddie Brock. It's Venom and Carnage. Nice. I still have not watched it. I finally I, did watch it, and it was. I, I was, and it was so pretty... anxious to, but <laughs> for some reason I just never got to. But I have heard about the bonus scene in it and how it connects to the film we'll be talking about the next tease? week. Tease, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. the tease that gets taken away from you. But there's, uh, <laughs> but then some. But it was also pointed out to me like they explain the timing and. We'll, we'll get it. Let's save that for next week. Yes, you got yes. it. Yes, yeah. Venom. Let there be carnage. Um, I've seen it three times now. Wow. It is entertaining. All right. I watch it more than I watch the original. <laughs> but okay. But both are great. Like I love Tom Hardy's Eddie Brock. You know, it's so different from what the comic book was, and so much better than Topher Grace. But it is a unique character. And his his interactions like with Miss Chen and things like that just just cool. I really do want to see it. I just I just never did and haven't yet. So. I kept I kept holding off I kept holding off too. And then it then I was at Walmart the one day. I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna just check it out because I also wanted to see all the making of. And it's an entertaining movie. Oh, I can't and I can't deny it. All right, let's get to number four. Jason gets a break again because we know free guy. Is his number four? Yep. Oh wow, James, what you got? My number four. My number four is Reminiscence, and this is one I was I was looking forward to just because of how good the trailer looked with Hugh Jackman, Hugh Jackman? Rebecca Ferguson, okay. Tandy Newton, and then is it you, kind of a flatliners it? kind of situation? No, no. Um, okay. It. I was intrigued because it looked cool. And then I found out that it was direct is the directorial debut of Lisa joy, who was one of the co-creators of Westworld, which is one of my favorite shows right now. And it's sort of a, they have this technology where you can, um, go inside someone's memories. Like they may come by and say like, as Re Rebecca Ferguson does saying like, I lost my keys. I need to find my keys. So they go in, to her memories to replay and they, and it displays visualizes their memories to see what their past actions were. And there's, uh, I, think I, 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 I know why you like this movie. <laughs> I figured it out. I figured why is that? It out. Cause it's, it's total recall meets inception. <laughs> it's, it's, it's steampunk total recall. It's, yep. It's kind of, oh, it's really hard no, to describe, it, but it's. Is Colin in it? No. Oh. No, it's, oh. it's, it's Hugh Jackman, Rebecca Ferguson, Tandy Newton, um, and you have Cliff Curtis. But it's sort of a guy, man meets woman, man falls in love with woman, woman disappears, man won't, can't let it go. And basically almost kills himself trying to find her and there's intrigue and there's murder and I was like a pitch meeting, <laughs> but it's also technically you could, you could consider it a dystopian future kind of movie because at some point something happened with the climate 
and the waters have risen. They live in Miami. The movie takes place in Miami and the waters have risen. You see like water all, all, along the streets. And apparently it's super hot during the day. So most people work at night. Hmm. And there was a war because Hugh Jackman and Tandy Newton were comrades in the war. But they don't get too much into how things got the way they are and what the war was about. It's more of, this is what we're doing now. And the, we have this technology. It's sometimes used to help with the police invest, like going into like a criminal's memories to find out why they did what they did or where they hid what they stole. In this case, it's all about, a, it's all starts with, I lost my keys. <laughs> but there's so much going on here and i thought it was very very uh creative storytelling in this one sounds confusing uh a little it's bit great <laughs> a little bit but it's but it's pretty amazing makes them great uh my number four is an amazon original and mm. i had to watch this because one of my favorites is in it kate beckinsale and it's a different take on the crank type story where she has a, uh, a problem with impulse and anger. Oh, and this is Kate if, Beckinsale. Yep. And if she gets pushed or irate, she will kill you. So she goes through treatments as a child and gets up and she finally come, meets this doctor who's Stanley Tucci and he has this vest on her. So it shocks her. Like she's got a little controller in her hand and anytime she feels the rage coming in, she hits a button and it shocks her. She meets a guy, Jai Courtney, and uh, falls for him and then he gets killed. So now she's on a mission to find out who killed him. And sometimes she doesn't push the button. <laughs> And it is, this is so good. Like, yeah. I, yeah. Um, as you can tell, I rank this above gunpowder milkshake and it's well worth it because of the story that's in this. What See, is I've it got called? another one. That's going to be what is it called jolt. Oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah. I never said the name. Did I? I'm completely I, in the, dark I knew the name of it. I thought, I thought he did, might've said it at the beginning and I just missed it, but I knew the name of it. Yeah, I'm completely in the dark on everything about this movie. It's called jolt. And yeah, it's definitely wow. worth to watch. See the the movie that I thought of that I'd missed and I added to my honorable mentions is in the similar vein. I'll hold off just in case it still comes okay. up, but but it's in that similar vein as well. Yeah. Oh, you, James, gotta watch. Gotta watch. I I'm, I want to see that. I'm super movie. intrigued. Oh, you haven't seen it, Jason? Yeah, definitely. No, I haven't. I have I haven't watched it, but I saw that trailer a couple times, and it, it does look interesting. Yeah, if you like Atomic Blonde and Gunpowder Milkshake, mm, that, yeah. you will like Joel. Atomic Blonde, yeah. This is we're getting a massive influx of these badass girl power movies, and I don't, I'm loving it. It is okay. so much fun. Absolutely, so much fun. With the exception of the 355 that's coming up, which really looks bad. I don't even know what that is. But that's a 22. It's, that one doesn't. We don't worry about that one right now. Yeah, right. <laughs> now we get on to number three, Jason. Number three, a grudge match so epic that it burned out my surround sound system while I was <laughs> watching it with my friends. Godzilla versus Kong, baby. God damn, did that movie deliver for me. It was, it was fun, but I, <sighs> I watched so many movies that I liked more than it since, and it just kind of kept getting pushed down. No, oh, I can just I can watch it over and over again because those fight scenes were just phenomenal. So much fun, especially the big extended climactic fight. It's also tainted by the fact that it came out a week after we got shut down back in March. That's true. That it is was true. such a piss off. <laughs> Did you see it in the theater, Jason? No, no, no. I no, no, because we were all... shut down. Right. Yeah, I missed it. I was oh, pissed, but no. then when they said they were releasing it on on uh uh, Crave had, Crave was carrying it here, I believe. Yeah. So, yeah. So I, yeah, I. Uh. Problem is that it's good. Watched. Those fights are awesome. But when when I watched it on Crave, the audio was horrible. Really? Like, yeah. Either the music was way too loud, or you couldn't hear anybody talking, or it was. It pulled me out of it so much I couldn't. 
I just I didn't enjoy it as much as I thought I would. My mind was mine sounded fine up until my surround sound burned out. <laughs> Quite literally, halfway through the movie. Bzz. See, that's a sign of a good movie right there. <laughs> it was the night attack in well, I guess Tokyo or whatever when when uh Godzilla starts blasting into the ground. Yeah. Oh yeah. Surround sound went. No, I can't handle that's it. That's when the that's when the surround he burned out my surround sound when he was burning that hole in the ground. Too much awesome. I am shutting down. <laughs> yep. James, what you got for number three? My number three, uh, which contains the best performance I saw by an actor this year in Jared Leto. This is the Jared Leto, Denzel Washington, Rami Malek, uh, serial killer, mystery thriller, The Little Things. Interesting lineup. I haven't heard of that one. No, it was either. at our th- it was at our theater for while we were open in March, and it was selling out every night. Being that the maximum capacity for the auditorium at the time was ten, um, <laughs> it that, is it go. is it is amazing. You've got Rami Malek as the new hot up and coming detective, and Denzel Washington as the burnout from years ago coming back to help out. And the lead suspect, Jared Leto, as this creepy guy, as what's his name, Albert Sparma. And he's got the long hair and the mu- and the facial hair from the you see. He probably reused in Morbius, but he's got like a little bit of a gut going on. He's supremely creepy in the movie, but as creepy as he may be, he may or may not be the the actual serial killer interesting and and and, but it's also not the point of the movie there's it there's other stuff going on like being able to let go of certain things or it's the little as as denzel washington says in the trailer it's the little things the little things that matter it's the little things that get you caught and oh it is so good (laughs) <laughs> you had me at Denzel. Like anything with him, I gotta watch. So yeah, that sounds like an, an amazing lineup with a good concept. I, oh. have to, I have to add that one to my list. Yes, yes, you do. Well, my number three is the one Jason should have seen. That brings the boys back together. Ghostbusters Afterlife. Ah, oh. yeah, I'm kind of kicking myself, okay. but uh, it should be coming out uh, in home home uh, streaming soon. So yeah, be right, be they, right, be right back. Sorry. I know all about this movie anyway. So (laughs) (laughs) they put this one together so nice. It is exactly what the fans have been asking. I have no doubt of that. I've been following the story of the making of it for quite some time. You know, I'm in love with the the fairy tale story of it. Mm -hmm. And I think that's kind of why I haven't, didn't push harder to go see it, is that I'm afraid that it's going to fail. It won't disappoint. Because I, this one, I like. I just feel like, you know, I, I, I say it every week. Nostalgia is a big thing for me. I feel like if they fuck up Ghostbusters, I don't think I can handle it. I'm sorry. Were you like, not here in 2016? I, I believe me. That's why. <laughs> that's the reason why they they cracked they cracked the shell. Yeah. And now you know now now my my Ghostbusters love is in is in is in dangerous territory. So. This this was a great thing too because ninety percent of the movie they actually give away in the trailers, you okay? Know? Because it's it's not sto- uh, solely story focused. Like you're not going to find out who did it. You know, you know it's mm-hmm. Ghostbusters. You know, you're going for the experience yeah. and you're going for the payoff at the end that you know is coming in this film. Yes. So yeah, it is so worth it. The was the was the the obvious callback jokes like the the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man <laughs> and all that stuff was that was that ham fisted and goofy or did it did it work did it make sense Oh no it it did make sense Okay then <laughs> one part I did see you see where you have Bill Murray talking to Gozer and he's just like we had something blah 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 and then all of a sudden like I think it's um, Ernie Hudson takes a shot at her that doesn't fail he's like. Immediately, he's like, well, it was worth a shot. <laughs> he's like distracting her. That didn't work. The one callback they do, and, and, and I'm not spoiling anything here. You know that they come back. Um, Gozer basically flat out asks him, are you a god? 
And what does Ernie Hudson's character say? Or no, what does Ray say? <laughs> yes. Yes. yes, we are. <laughs> he learned his lesson. <laughs> <laughs> Mike Donald says, like the little things. Nobody was a good nobody was a good movie, also. Oh well, yeah, nobody. Nobody was on my it, it would be in my top 20, yeah. That's my in my honorable mentions. But yeah, Ghostbusters Afterlife, gotta check it out. Like it's, uh, I'm anxiously waiting for it to be available at home because I do really want to see it. All right. There we go. Number two, Jason, what do you got? Number two for me, and I, this might be polarizing, but there's just something about the, the Suicide Squad. God damn it. Did that movie just deliver for me? It made it was so much fun. The trailers like it told you nothing about the story at all of how that was going to play out. If you watch but, the movie, the trailers tell you everything. You just don't know it. Just not in the right order and, and how it put goes together. But the, uh, the, um, when they announced the massive lineup of people that were appearing in this movie, they immediately did tell people, but so many people forgot. They said three quarters of these people don't make it out of act one. <laughs> Act well, one. if you watch, if you watch that pitch meeting on YouTube, where the, he keeps mentioning like all the actors, this big actor, Pete Davidson, and then like Nathan Fillion, and, and it'll be like, and what do they do in this movie? Die almost immediately. And <laughs> yeah, I was just about to say, first act, you do first ten minutes. That's what was yeah. the beautiful thing about it. Yeah, you're, you're watching this film, and it's like, yes, and boom, oh, that one's dead. Wait a minute, what? You, you just saw how, how what the Suicide Squad's really used for because they're expendable. I'm trying to come around on this movie. I've watched it a f- several times and listened to the commentary, and I'm I'm starting to come around on it. I I know this that I will be watching it again in the next week in preparation for the Peacemaker TV show that drops in two weeks. I'm thinking about watching that because there was there there's one scene that keeps standing out. Not to cut you off, there's one key scene that keeps standing out, and it's where you get Joel Kinnaman talking to his like Colombian or whatever connection. And he said like, these guys right here, it turns around and you see like John Cena approaches Idris Elba saying, what's this for? And you see Idris Elba just like, get, get your hands off. And he's just like, are fucking idiots. But <laughs> <laughs> yep. All right. James, from now on, you're not allowed to say, I didn't mean to cut you off. You from now on have to say, I'm gonna let you finish. And then you can carry on. Okay, that's the thing we have. To do. I'm going to let you finish. I'm yeah. employing the Kanye rule. That's right. I'm going to let I'm you. Like, I'm going to let you finish. But <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I like. I like that. I like that. Okay. I like Polka Dot Man too. It actually gave I'm, him I'm, a purpose. He I'm, steals the movie. I'm coming around on it. It still doesn't. It still doesn't even remotely measure up to the first Suicide Squad movie to me, but. I'm coming around. I, I, I get that. I will f- acknowledge that. I won't argue that with anyone, but I really do like this movie. Polka Dot Man steals the movie for me. The effect yeah. with uh, everyone looking like his mother. Oh my God. That's brilliant. Including Starro. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, come on. Yes. You know, but, and, but the whole, the whole assault on the camp and they, they end up, it's just <laughs> like, how about uh, what? What about my guys? Why didn't they alert me? We didn't. We, we didn't see anybody out there. <laughs> <laughs> and that was brutal too. Like what? What? Some of the stuff they did to those guys. Just, just and I, listening to the commentary, apparently John Cena ad libbed the whole. He walks by the body and just stabs it a bunch of times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, his pro his promo work for that for that whole f- release of that film was great too. Like shows up at. Uh, on Fallon he, or whatever in costume. Yeah, I heard about that. I never watched it though. He's there with like two other people plus Taika Waititi and he's in full costume. <laughs> like acting like it's all normal. Um, <laughs> it's but funny. when it when it shifts and spoiler alert when when Cena's character flips and oh, him man. him I and so uh, Flag start fighting Instantly, that is that is one of the most brutal and awesome fights I've seen in a film in recent years. Like I was so pissed off that, that fight. Scene that initially. fight was so well done. It yeah. is great. I I was just so upset. Yeah. Oh yeah. I was I was completely and utterly pissed. 
course, then with Idris Elba with his bullet that goes inside another bullet. <laughs> Smaller bullet. <laughs> I thought you I, said we were picked for our own unique abilities. He does the exact same thing I do. <laughs> so wa wa Wanted had the two bullets colliding in midair first. Yeah. And yeah. this this movie said, well, yeah, well, I can beat this. <laughs> exactly. That's so true. Great. All right then, James. What's your number two? My number two is another movie I discovered on through Google Play this year. It is sort of a time travel movie, and it is called Needle in a Time Stack. This one stars Leslie Odom Jr. And if you don't recognize the name, have either oh. of you guys watched Person of Interest? No, I know Leslie Odom Jr. from what he's most well known for. What's that? Hamilton. I haven't seen Hamilton. One of the stars of the Broadway show Hamilton. The guy's a massive star. Well, congrats for him. I thought he was great in person of interest. <laughs> <laughs> and it's also got Frida Pinto in there. You got Cynthia Erivo and Orlando Bloom. Those are the main people in it. And you've essentially got two guys, two, two, two people. You got Leslie Odom Jr. and Cynthia Erivo living. They're, they're married. They're married. They have a cat. And, but it's slightly in the future where time travel is possible, but very expensive. If you're rich enough, you can, they call it jaunting. You can go back, you can pay a lot of money, go back in time and experience, go anywhere you want, anytime you want for a limited amount of time. But hmm. sometimes people go back in time and they change things. They break the rules and they have these time waves where all of a sudden it happens early on in the movie. They look and you see this wave coming from across the river or across the, the city and it goes through and it, and it passes through everyone. And like somebody may have a nosebleed. Somebody may have no reaction at all. And something has changed. And with the couple, the start, the couple, the stars of the movie. And it took me two viewings to catch this. All of a sudden they have a dog and blah, blah, blah. It's like, I don't like dogs. And, blah, blah, blah. and I had forgotten the fact that the, the in the opening of the movie, they had a cat. Somebody went back in time and changed something. And there's reference to one of their friends that used to be Leslie Odom Jr., one of his friends, and it's played by Orlando Bloom. Some rich guy took over his father's company. And he, has, he used to be married to Leslie Odom Jr.'s current wife, Cynthia Revo. And he has been trying to break them up by going into the past, trying to change things. And at some point in the movie, a wave comes through and all of a sudden the two main actors aren't together anymore. And she's oh. back with Orlando Bloom. And if something isn't done right away, he will start to forget. They will start to forget that they were ever married to each other. So something it, it that's that's where the crux of the movie the struggle of the movie begins very cool i've never heard of this but i i want to see and it neither had i until just a few months ago and i'm just like this sounds intriguing and i watched it i'm like oh my god very very cool needle in a time stack by the way cynthia rebo also <laughs> another massive broadway star won tony's for her color the color purple recently played harriet tubman in the Harriet Tub Harriet Tubman film, I was aware of that one. I haven't seen it. She's she has a great supporting role in Widows. Yes, I have heard good things about that one for her too. That's just my two cents. Yeah, no, no, cool, good. cool. I will be checking that out. My number two, you guys know Zack Snyder's Justice League. Mm -hmm. so yeah, now we are at number one. Are we? When are we doing our honorable mentions? Right after number one. Okay. I. Why do I have a feeling? At least two of us have the same number one. I'm already copying out mine and pasting it in yours. I okay. guarantee, I guarantee none of you have my number one. <laughs> I, I'm okay. In yours. <laughs> which, which, which means that either James hasn't seen this movie or uh, yes. we're about to get into a, a really big argument. I uh, know. Don't be so pessimistic. I know he's seen it. He told me he saw it. Okay. Then the fact that it is not on his list is going to. <laughs> it may still be in my top 20 which ordinarily it makes me would think that next thing. week's episode is going to be exactly what i expected it to be <laughs> again don't so, be so pessimistic uh so of course i'm beating it on the bush here spider-man no way home my god what a, a fantastic 
experience that was head to toe, top to bottom, start to finish. I loved every single bit of this film. I can't argue with any point on that. It's still not my favorite Spider-Man movie, but mine mine is still far from home because of the, uh, largely because of Jake Gyllenhaal. But the fact that you don't have this movie in your list at all really it's it's it, it would be it was almost in my honorable mentions. It would be in my bottom eleven to twenty if I did a top okay. twenty. All right, all right, fine. Okay, I'll, it's not as bad as because it, uh, okay. every because right. Toby and Andrew are gold. <laughs> Willem the, Defoe. Wor- the worst kept secret of the year. <laughs> Willem Dafoe. Willem Dafoe. Damn Will- steals Willem that Dafoe film. is great. I think. I think uh, Alfred Molina was a little funnier. He was funnier, <laughs> yes, but Dafoe was just he was on, and the fact that he he argued that he would only do the role if he could do all the physical stuff himself. Mm-hmm. You know, so that was Willem Dafoe. I working couldn't believe his how much he brought off. back. How much he brought back that schizophrenic evil character, just like that. That's it's Defoe, man. It shouldn't Especially you. at the end, like Peter, what 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 have I done? Uh, I just I it's another one where I cried in laughter, I cried in sorrow, I cried out of sheer joy. I was I, very surprised at the balls they had who they killed off. Yeah. It needed to be done, though. Yes, it did. I it don't did. know that it did. No, it legit did because that. Although, was... although you wouldn't get that amazing scene where Toby and Andrew talk about their loss. Mm-hmm. I'll, that... I'll give you that. I'll give you that. And yeah. now the rumors, the, the 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 wheels that we're hearing are turning. <laughs> Spider Man Four and Spider Man Five, and the, they're talking that we may get more from those guys at some point yeah. or could we get just another spider verse crossover film mm. you know uh, do they want to be into a full on com- competition with the animated you know have either of you well, seen the a, uh, into the spider verse 2 yet it's not a competition it's not a competition if you ask me um it is quite literally a competition Spid- they're, they're versus, all fighting for spider the same money spider verse is a good movie but it's not on the same level as any of the live action ones, in my opinion. Some a lot people, of people consider the first Spider Verse movie to be the best comic book movie of that year, and those and that people was the year are, that are out of their fucking out. minds, if you ask me. But you like what you like, and there's yep. nothing wrong yep. with. Yep. I'm not getting. I'm not. I don't want to get. No, angry no, no, here. no, no, no. This is this is this the rest is me, of the world has me angry. This is me I'm not vocalizing angry what's inside my head. <laughs> <laughs> you like what you like, and you shouldn't be ashamed of what you like. Mm-hmm. I, yeah. So, and I know there's another Spider Verse movie coming. Yeah, the trailer that they put out a trailer. It it looks amazing. So I I haven't watched it yet, but I like I like how they I like the slight reference to Miles Morales in the movie. I didn't even catch it. So they they, they made a slight like. Something, I don't want to talk about it too much because some... we'll be getting into it next week. So oh yeah, much, okay, right? okay, okay. Yep, yep. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, James. What's your number two or number one? My number one is a movie called Long Weekend. Another one, not that I discovered through Google Play. I just I I went I went to Walmart one day and there was a DVD on the shelf and it was like has a picture of a woman and a man on the front and the tagline was they found each other just in time and you got a guy who's lost his job he's in between jobs he's broken up with his girlfriend he's been seeing a therapist he's very much near rock bottom and he just decides to grab a bottle of liquor and go to see a matinee movie and he watches the movie passes out and a girl who was in the theater at the same time wakes him up. And then he meets her again outside. She asks him where a good place to drink would be. So he goes with her to drink at a bar. <clears throat> There's a relationship that starts with these two that develops into... She has all this, all these wads of cash on her. She's very vague about her past. 
and what comes out is she's from the future. Now, the question is, does he believe her when she parses out all these details about the future and like these weird things that happened to her? And I know I'm not explaining it very well. There's a, it's a very simple concept and plot to the movie, but it's the performances that you have to watch. You have to watch this movie to believe what I'm saying that it's because the, the, the bulk of the movie takes place over just one weekend, hence the title long weekend. And it's sort of the kind of like a, my the, crazy trip to Vegas kind of story. Kind of like she's come back from the future for one, for, for a very specific purpose. And she ends up to, to, take advantage of this Mark, the guy and ends up falling in love with him and he falls in love with her, but he doesn't entirely believe that she's from the future and it's what happens from there on. But you've also got a fan and like the actors, uh, the one actor I'd seen before, um, what's his name? He was, he had one supporting role in the big short. Remember you get all the guys that are, <clears throat> buying up all these socks and stuff. And you have the two guys in the little garage hedge fund. One of the guys was played by Finn Whitrock. And the main actress in this movie is her name is, uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Zoe Chow. But you've also got a great supporting role from, uh, Damon Wayans jr as one of his his best friend who's married with kids and stuff and just takes him in because he needs a he's getting evicted from his apartment so i know it's not a great explanation you just have to trust me on this it's the best movie i saw that in 2021 yeah i haven't heard that one either no neither have i that's good all righty well what was that, your number one rap i it was it was spider-man that's <laughs> Why I was trying to join. I know, but I kind of, I kind of <laughs> hogged that conversation. So, but I want to know, I want to know your feelings. Oh, like, where did, what did it work? What, how did it work for you? It's all good. Trust me. There no. was a couple points I was trying to make, but they were of topic, and then the topic changed. So it's, it would just be random lines I'd be throwing out right now. So no, it's all good. Uh, we're going to be talking tomorrow, or not tomorrow, next week, because next week we have a topic coming up called the highs and lows of Hollywood. A discussion of Spider-Man: No Way Home and Matrix Resurrections with Black Fawn C.F. Benner. I He's... thought you was Chris G. Well, Chris G. was from Black Fawn too. Oh, yeah, okay. I thought you said it was Chris G. who asked about this. No, 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 it was Benner. Oh, Benner. Yeah. <laughs> well, at least, well, James's foe. <laughs> I, I. <laughs> <laughs> I I hope he's I hope he's not on the negative side of Matrix Resurrections because I thought it was amazing. I thought it was better than Spider Man No Way Home. <gasps> oh wait, this is gonna be fun. It's going <laughs> exactly where I thought it was gonna go. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. Now nice. I, I just want I'm gonna because I, I don't want to totally blindside you. I'm gonna let you know <laughs> that in my mind, we'll get into the argument of placement, but. One is high, one is low, and for me, the King's Man is right in the middle. Really? Yes. Well, I have no opinion on King's Man because I haven't seen it. So I know. I, 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 I'm just saying, in my mind, for where I've placed both these films, the King's Man is the solid center point for recent box office for me. Interesting. This is going to be fun next week. I, I I'm, am. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. Yes. So is Benner. So. Uh... Well, um, um, I, I'm oh, gonna, and, and I will say this. I'm, I, I'll say this now. I will say it again um, before or when we start the show. Um, I have to be careful how I word things when we talk next week. Really? Mm-hmm. Because Why? it can. Because there are things that, that there there are things that maybe that could be said that could get me in a lot of trouble. Oh really? I yes. I'm confused but intrigued. You, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You, if you're not familiar, then you need to look at what the Matrix is, who it was made by, what it did. Hmm. Are you talking and about that's Lana? All, Lana that's Wachowski? all I'm going to say. I don't want to get into any more of it right now. Interesting, but okay. 
This yeah. is going to be an amazing discussion next week. So make yeah. sure everybody you're here 645 next Monday as we come up on episode 400. Mm -hmm. And then next week, by the way, that's the day before my 48th birthday. Nice. nice. Okay, no, okay. Well, we got our honorable mentions. Yes. Oh, shit. Yeah. Play your way. James, go first. Cause oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, the, the ones that have already been mentioned, Zack Snyder's Justice League. Mm -hmm. The Matrix Resurrections. I have uh, the Green Knight. Okay, I've heard of that one. The one about the Sir Gawain and the Green Knight, where he lops off his head, and then a year later he I'm has. Curious to, about that one, but I haven't checked it out yet. Very well made. Um, I've got uh, one that I discovered, and the actually the remaining three are ones that I discovered on Google Play. One is called Deliver Us From Evil. It was a Korean film about a hitman who decides to retire from the life mm -hmm. and finds out that the mother of his child has been killed and the person he just killed was the brother of, an, of a notorious uh, psychopath. So while he's going after his daughter, his orphan daughter, this psychopath is coming after him. Um, okay. I've got... a film called Lorelei which is Pablo Schreiber and you guys have seen The Wire right? The TV show? Yeah. No. No? Did you see 13 Hours The Secret Soldiers of Benghazi? No. Do you know the actor Pablo Schreiber? I know the name. I think I know who yeah. you're talking. Yeah. He's, he's a guy he gets out of prison. He was a former biker and he reconnects with an old girlfriend played by Jenna Malone who has a bunch of kids now. And it's just, it's just a pure acting piece on the, on the part of Pablo Schreiber and Jenna Malone. It's just beautiful acting. And there was another one from Google play called to whom it may concern, which there's an actress that everyone would recognize, but you may not know her name. It's Dawn Olivieri, and she was in the last season of Heroes as the one, the girl with the tattoos on her back. She could d d interpret the future. Mm -hmm. I know who you're talking about. It's also got Wilmer Valderrama in there, and it's sort of like a woman who, from the outset, you know that she's going to kill herself. And she connects with a guy down the hall in her apartment building who's breaking up with his girlfriend, and it's sort of will it be enough to keep her from going off the edge and uh, how, how strong their connection is going to be. Cool. So those are my, uh, those are my honorable mentions. Jason. All right. Um, so the uh, badass assassin girl movie, Kate with uh, uh, Elizabeth Winstead. Ooh, Very yeah. similar. It's it's similar Ooh. to Crank. It's got like a neon look and whatnot. And she gets injured or she's poisoned or whatever. So she's only got so much time to live and goes on a revenge spree. And it's pretty brutal and badass. I've not heard of that. Um, so I think it sounds like if you like Jolt, you'll probably like Kate. So Rob, there we'll, we'll swap. Okay, I gotta watch Jolt. <laughs> you gotta watch Kate. And Deal. We'll be, all right. Um, nobody isn't is one of the other ones that I watched yeah. just in the last two days. Bob Odenkirk. It is Death Wish, Death Wish meets John Wick, and yeah. it was fucking badass. <laughs> nice. Oden, Odenkirk, Odenkirk played it so well. The, the that movie just the way it starts, it opens like you see is just repetitive humdrum life. They really hammer that home, and you can just tell that he's just a boiling kettle. The best, just, the best just, line in the movie in the bus. I'm gonna fuck you guys up. <laughs> Nice. Um, but it wasn't smooth either, too. Like he he got his ass beat, but he he took them all out, you know. And then the last one I want to mention, and I might get some looks for this, but uh, Paw Patrol the movie. We took you my have, You have kids. I can't judge. You have kids. We took my granddaughter to see. <laughs> How about new? I personally find. No, I, I, I my, my girlfriend saw it with her niece too. She thought it was a surprisingly good movie. It I, is. I've I've witnessed Paw Patrol, the TV show, and it's it's torture. Okay, <laughs> Linda said name again, please. Uh, you'd have to give us just a bit more information because literally James and Jason just fired about eighteen movies at us. 
<laughs> so just if you can tell a little bit, I know one of them will jump in and tell you the name of the movie. But yes, Paw Patrol, yes, aimed at little kids. If the you know, if your kid's a fan of Paw Patrol, they're gonna love the movie. But it has some really good fun jokes. It's not just a boring kids show, you know, adults will get a little bit of a chuckle out of it. But see, that's just it. It doesn't matter what it is. It matters the story, the acting. It is it fun and it, oh, exactly. it, it, it it tugs at my heartstrings. There's 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 some emotion when between between Chase and Ryder. There's a big there's a big moment that before yes. Paw Patrol. Oh, nobody. Ah, yeah, okay. nobody with Bob Odenkirk. Nobody. Yeah, that's literally the name. Nobody. Yep. Because he's because he was a nobody. He he was in the military, but he was just an auditor. It's very much like John the John Wick, except it is a lot less polished. He, the, his wife keeps saying he was just an auditor, and his son doesn't want to um, interview him for a school <laughs> project because he was ex-military because he was just an auditor, and then he explains what that means later in the movie. Yes, yeah. I'm spoiling it. I, I know, but I, I got to because it, it's it's a great way to look at it. It was yeah, they called us auditors, as in the last guy you want to see. And I love I love that it was fine. It was it was a movie finally. A follow up movie finally from the guy who did Hardcore Henry. Oh, that was the same dude. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, I I know it's on Cineplex.com. Like if you rent movies on Cineplex, it's there. I watched it on Amazon Prime. Oh, is it? But on? I think I, I I know it's on Amazon Prime. On I Google? think it's on a couple different. Uh, I, I streaming believe services, it's on Google so. Play as well. But I know it's on Prime because that's where I watched it. Well, give us two seconds and we will know. I'm looking it up right now. And y- your honorable mentions, Rob, or what was left of your 16? Uh, nobody is available to rent on Amazon Prime. Oh. Yeah. Well, that's how I watched it. I, I'm, my son might be getting a bill for a I, movie then. I picked, up the, <laughs> I picked up the Blu-ray and watched it from that. <laughs> Um, do, 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 do. It was I'll be hearing, I'll be hearing about it. It's uh, the, my, my our Amazon Prime account is is tallies, so I'll be hearing. It was about another it one that came out charge. while we were shut down. So, uh, I only have four because literally I only have six left that I saw. Yeah, and uh, uh, two of them you guys mentioned: Black Widow and Suicide Squad. Nice. So the only two I can I can promptly say that would be good is Quiet Place Part Two. Oh, I was so disappointed by that. And and Shang Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. That was good. It was it was good. It was good. I just it it was a good solid effort, but it just didn't crack my list. No, no, me neither. The uh, the other two that I have on there, unfortunately, I would not recommend are Halloween Kills and The Power of the Dog. I tried. Right. I watched that because Benedict Cumberbatch is in it and Cody Smith. Uh, what's his name? He was Nightcrawler in uh, the X-Men Jim, film. Alan Cummings. No, 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 no. The young Nightcrawler. Oh, Cody, oh, Cody I, Scott I McPhee. There we go. Yeah, he's in it. And um, oh, my gosh, who plays the mom? Oh. Now I'm drawing a blank. I had another couple that could have been, that might have helped fill out my top 20. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, those Who Wish Me Dead. That Taylor Sheridan movie, The Firefighters with Angelina Jolie. Oh, okay. Which was impressive. And it had the little kid that showed up on season four of Yellowstone. I've only watched the first episode of Yellowstone so far. Oh. So. Well, you've watched an amazing start. To I did. It. I did. Yes, I'll be and watching more. And the Antoine Fuqua movie, Infinite. That Marky Mark movie with... Chibotel Edge of Four, where they sort of about reincarnation and stuff. Nope, don't know that one. Cool. There's another one I found through Google Play, but it was another director who put out two movies this year. He put out one, he put out Infinite, and he put out The Guilty, which I haven't watched yet. Another one with Jake Gyllenhaal. There you go. All right. <clears throat> All right. Well, in that case, for another week at the Movie Madhouse, this is Rob. This is James. Jason. And we'll see y'all later. Bye. Toodles. Oh, thank you, fellas. It's a man.